There's a quote from a famous ham radio audio engineer about microphones I like. And let me paraphrase. The color is the only thing that matches the stock mic to the radio it comes with. I'm Jim N4BFR, one of the instructors at Ham Radio Prep. Let's take a look at adding a new microphone to your shack. KN4NEH, this is NGM. Hey, I hear you loud and clear. You know what? I bumped into Jack a few minutes ago. Let me see if we can. We're going to start off by upgrading the mic for the ICOM IC7300 we used in our HF Masterclass. After we do that, we'll cover some options you have to interface your mic to your ham radio. By the way, none of our recommendations in this video are sponsored. We're just showing what we like and use. Most modern HF radios from Flex, Kenwood, Yezu, or Elecraft can take a standard dynamic microphone. There are a lot of options in that universe, and we'll show you some of those in a few minutes. In choosing a mic for our ICOM radio, we needed one with a condenser element. This radio does not handle the input from a dynamic microphone as well. So we went with the Heil ICM mic from Heil Ham Radio. You can buy these directly from Heil or from other ham stores. We picked ours up at Gigaparts, and there's a link in the description. As we open it up and take a look, the good news for us is that because it's radio specific, the ICM comes with an 8 foot cable attached. That cable interfaces right to the front port of the radio. It also has a push to talk button right on the body. We're going for maximum hands free flexibility when we're operating. That allows us to type in our World Radio League logbook or look up DX spots while we operate. So we'll add two more pieces of gear to our shopping list. We like to have a foot pedal for our push to talk switch. We picked up the Heil version, but there are others around. I have two radios at home, so I use an old Dictaphone style foot pedal with two buttons. If you don't want to add wires, you could also use the Vox function of your radio. Finally, we like lots of clear desktop space, but we're not ready to permanently attach anything to our desk. So instead of a broadcast style boom for our mic, we picked up this desktop mic stand. It's designed to sit on the corner of the desk. Budget for the Heil mic and foot pedal at Gigaparts and the stand at Amazon came in at less than $185. Let's go ahead and set everything up. So step one, power down your current radio and disconnect the mic. Now you can put this mic away in case you want to take your radio on the road for a portable activation. Maybe this lives in your go bag now. Step two, set up the mic stand first. It comes in a few parts that generally screw together. Don't put on the clip that holds the mic on yet. So when we get the microphone out, you'll find it comes with a clip that fits on the end of the microphone stand once we use the adapter. Or you can use the one that comes with the stand. Either way, when you mount the mic, you want to make sure the push to talk button is not accidentally depressed in the clip. Let me show you. So pretty, and the push to talk button is not touching the clip. So another thing to think about is how you're gonna manage your cables. I like to use wire ties or Velcro to attach the mic cable to the stand. This particular stand has a clip to keep the cable up and out of the way. Again, we're trying to achieve maximum desk space. So we'll pop this clip off. And there we go. Next step we're gonna do is attach the mic cable to the radio. Just like the handheld mic, it should only go in one way. Screw it down just finger tight so it accidentally doesn't get pulled out while you're operating. We also need to attach the foot pedal, and that's pretty straightforward. Find a spot under the desk that's comfortable for placement. Then run the cable back up and plug it into the quarter inch jack on the ICOM cable. With everything connected up, you should be ready to go. On our ICOM, we can use the voice TX recorder by selecting menu and voice to record a clip and see how we sound. Adjust the mic gain if you want louder or softer. If you don't have that option, try testing with a web SDR to listen to yourself over the air. We go through that complete process in the HF Masterclass. Before we go on to other radio brands, two more things about ICOM. First, 
This setup should work on many modern ICOM HF radios. We've used it on an ICOM IC9700 system as well. That's a deluxe desktop radio for VHF, UHF operating, including satellites. You can even use it with a mobile radio like the ID5100 D-Star radio if you have the right adapters. Second, if you're a brand loyalist, ICOM does have two optional desktop mics you can use. The SM30 and SM50 are compatible and have a push to talk button on the base. You'll have to do extra work to add a foot pedal via the accessory port if you find that feature helpful. The SM30 is just a little less than our setup here at $170. As we mentioned earlier, a dynamic microphone works well on many other brands of radio, and we have a few here. We've tried them on Yezu, Flex, and Elecraft, just to name a few. So let's take a look starting with some old school options. If you're longing for the CB days, you might want to find an A-Static D104. This is the basic model that I found for $40 at a ham fest. Now, you will need to do some wiring to make it ready for your rig, but doesn't it bring back some memories of listening to Bandit and Snowman if you're of a certain age? Most classic mics and podcast mics like this Shure 555H usually have a 3-pin or 4-pin connection called an XLR. A mic with a 4-pin XLR will typically have a push-to-talk button somewhere on the mic or bass. Once you get the audio out via XLR, you'll need to look at your radio to see what the input style is. For instance, on a flex radio, you can use an 8-pin style connection on a front or an XLR connector directly on the back. On a Yezu radio, many of the modern ones use a jack that's shaped like an Ethernet cable called RJ45. Kenwood and Elecraft use a different 8-pin adapter. If you do decide to go with a mic that doesn't come from your radio manufacturer, we're going to point you to the folks at Heil Ham Radio. They have a nice finder tool, as well as charts, to help you pair up the right mic and adapter with your radio. Again, if you're brand loyal, Kenwood and Yezu both have options in their respective groups. You can find the Kenwood MC90, and you'll pay around $325. Yezu's M90D mic looks nice on a desk and comes in around $200. Positive is that they come with connectors that fit your radio, but a downside is we see that many are not designed to be mounted on a boom stand. At the beginning of this video, we paraphrased this quote, the color is the only thing that matches the stock mic to the radio it comes with. That came from Bob Heil, K9EID. Now, just to reinforce, we promise this is not a Heil ad. However, when you have an expert in concert sound that used to do touring systems for folks like Joe Walsh, it's hard not to listen to what they say. By the way, Bob also invented Peter Frampton's talk box and has exhibited at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So, we're lucky to have an expert interested in ham radio sound. If you prefer Shure, AKG, or something more exotic, give them a try. Just remember that unless you're using an ICOM rig, you generally want a dynamic microphone. All that said, here are five more mics we like. The Heil PR10 is a nice mic with really great sound, and it comes in at less than $200. I've used this for some podcasting, and I found it comes with a stand and a push-to-talk button. So, you just need to add the proper cabling. If you want to go top of the line, think about the Heil PR40 as your best choice. This will run you just under $400 for a new microphone, and that's before any accessories. Now, indulge me with two more fun options. The PR77D is a retro option that's adjustable for music or voice settings. It looks classic and comes in purple or black, but the stand is extra. The Shure MV7X seems to be another great option for a shack with a price point below $200. Designed for voice response, it'll mount on a boom or a desktop stand and has an XLR output. We haven't tested it, so if you do pick one up, let us know how it works. We do like that Shure's support site is active with discussions on connecting other versions of their mics to ham radios. Finally, this one was a bit of a holy grail for me. I love the look of ribbon microphones, so I found this discontinued Heil Classic 5. To me, 
It looks like the microphone some crooner would use while broadcasting on the NBC Red Network back in the 1930s. I found it used and was able to customize my call with a 3D printer and some silver paint. That was a fun project. There are good reasons to get away from the stock mic on your radio. Maybe you want to go hands-free or just want to add some flair. Here are the four things to remember. Match your mic with your radio. ICOM uses special mics with condenser elements, while many others use dynamic element mics. Get your cabling together, including an adapter if needed. Buy or make a foot pedal or some other push-to-talk device. Or just use Vox if you want to do it all with your voice. Think about how you want to use your desktop space when it comes to stands. If you want something close up, you can find some nice ones with integrated push-to-talk buttons. You can also mount a boom to your desk and be able to use it to push away when not in use. We're with Bob Heil. You can do better than the stock microphone that comes with your radio. Take a look around at the options and find something that fits your style, shack, and budget. Finally, it's the time of year when people ask about gift lists. Someone might enjoy getting you something flashy for your shack. Feel free to forward this video with our suggestions. I'm Jim N4BFR with my many, many mics. From all of us here at Ham Radio Prep 73, and we hope to hear you on the air soon.